Good evening, aspirants. Welcome to Daily Newspaper Analysis brought by Shankara Yes Academy. Today's date is 26th February 2025. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. The first article is Majorana, which is a quantum particle recently discovered by Microsoft. The second article is about international disease classification. The Indian traditional systems like Ayurveda, Siddha, Yunani are recently classified under this international disease classification by WHO. The third article is about the green bonds and the importance of green bonds and what are the challenges with it. The last article is about European Union and the economic relationship between India and European Union. So these are the four important articles we are going to discuss in the prelims exam perspective. Now let us get into the discussion. Now look at this article, Microsoft has created a new quantum chip called Majorana 1 and this chip is aiming to create a less error qubits in quantum computing. So in this context, let us discuss about this Majorana 1 and about the basics of quantum computing. Quantum computing is a technology uses quantum mechanic principles like superposition and entanglement in order to solve the complex problems. The problems which cannot be solved by the classical computers can be solved using quantum computers. Now what is quantum mechanics? It is a branch of physics and this explains how extremely small objects such as atoms and subatomic particles can exhibit both a particle like behavior and wave like characteristics. So the entire concept of wave particle duality is the basis of quantum mechanics. Now we have seen that uh, two important concepts, one is superposition and entanglement. Now what is superposition? Superposition means the particles can exist in multiple state at once and these particles can influence each other instantly. So this is entanglement. So the particles can be placed at uh, both the ends of the universe and still they have effect on one another. So this concept is entanglement and the particle can exist in multiple states that is they can exist at a wave like behavior or they can exist like a particle. So they can exist at a multiple state at once. This is called superposition. So these particles are fundamental of quantum computing. Now what is a qubit which is also called quantum bit. Quantum bit is a fundamental unit of quantum computing. So the quantum bit is capable of superposition and entanglement. A classical bit which represents either 0 or 1. So this classical bit is used in classical computers. Whereas a quantum bit or qubit can exist in multiple states simultaneously. So this is due to the principle of superposition. For example, if you take uh, the classical bit, it holds a value of 0 or 1. But a qubit can be in the combination of states representing both 0 and 1 at the same time. So this is a difference between the classical bit and a quantum bit. Now the quantum bits also have the property of entanglement. As I said earlier, entanglement means the two particles can influence each other no matter how far they are or no matter in what state they are. So qubits are also entangled which means the state of one qubit is directly related to the state of another qubit. So this is regardless of the distance separating them. Even if you place a qubit at one end of the universe and place an another qubit at another end of the universe, they still can influence each other. So this property has no classical counterpart which means the classical computers cannot do this. So this quantum computers uses quantum bits that is qubits for their computing and these qubits are capable of superposition and entanglement. So these concepts are very important for prelims examination perspective. Now these are some of the applications of quantum computing, drug discovery, climate modeling, navigation system, medical imaging, financial optimization, cryptography. So these applications are listed here, you can take a look at it. Now what is Majorana particles which are recently discovered by Microsoft? This Majorana particle is a theoretical subatomic particle which has their own antiparticle and they can be produced in topological superconductors. So these technical terms are not very essential for us. These Majorana particles are a promising for a stable less error qubits in quantum computing. One of the important challenges in quantum computing is the qubits can create many errors but producing very less error qubits are an important task in this quantum computing. So this Majorana particle can produce a less error qubits and this will advance the quantum computing further. So this is the significance of this discovery. Now let us discuss a prelims question regarding this topic. Consider the following statements regarding qubits and Majorana particles. Look at the first statement, a qubit can exist in multiple states simultaneously due to the principle of superposition. Yes, this statement is correct. 
Majorana particles are naturally occurring subatomic particles used in quantum computing. No, this statement is incorrect because it is produced in laboratory. So, the correct answer is option A, one only. With this, let us conclude the discussion and move to the next news article. Now, look at this article. The article highlights the inclusion of Ayurveda, Siddha and Unani in World Health Organization International Classification of Diseases. So, this is based on India's request in October 2023. So, this has been for global recognition and standardization of India's traditional medical system. So, this will enhance the credibility, facilitate research and integrates the traditional medicine into mainstream healthcare. Now, what is international classification of diseases by WHO and what is the importance of these traditional medicines? So, this is what we are going to discuss in this discussion. International classification of diseases is a globally recognized system which helps in identifying, coding and classifying the diseases and injuries. So, it is crucial for maintaining a standardized way to record and track the health issues around the world. The international classification of diseases also serves as an important purpose in healthcare sector. Firstly, it acts as a global standard for disease classification. So, this ensures that healthcare professionals can identify and categorize the medical condition consistently. Secondly, it facilitates the healthcare planning. The government and healthcare institutions can rely on the system to monitor the disease trend and develop policies for public health. So, this is why international classification of diseases is very important one. The latest version of ICD that is international classification of diseases is ICD-11. This ICD-11 was officially adopted by WHO in 2022. This updated version has several improvements which make it more compatible with the evolving healthcare landscape. One of the key changes in this ICD-11 is inclusion of new supplementary chapter on traditional medicine. So, this chapter recognizes and classifies the medical systems like Ayurveda, Siddha and Unani. These systems have long been part of various cultures, especially in Asia. And ICD-11 helps them to bring together with the global healthcare framework. Another significant update in ICD-11 is digital compatibility, which allows ICD-11 to integrate easily with the electronic healthcare records. As the digital health technologies continue to evolve, this feature is crucial for efficient healthcare management and also for data tracking on diseases. So, we have seen about the ICD of WHO. Now, let us have an overlook about these traditional medicines. Firstly, about Ayurveda. Ayurveda is one of the oldest medical systems in the world, which originated in India around 3000 years ago. The word Ayurveda means science of life. So, it focuses on creating a balance between the body, mind and spirit. The primary principle of Ayurveda is the belief that the fundamental energies like doshas, the Vata Dosha which is air and space, Pitta means the fire and water, and the Kapha means earth and water. So, each person has a unique combination of these Doshas which determine their physical and mental characteristics. Ayurveda uses variety of treatments including herbal medicine, dietary guidelines, yoga and also the therapies like Panchakarma. So, the goal of Ayurveda is maintain as holistic wellness and to prevent the disease through natural healing methods. So, this is about Ayurveda. Next about Siddha. Siddha medicine originated in ancient Tamil Nadu in South India and it is one of the oldest and most traditional systems of healing. Siddha medicine is based on the balance of three varieties that is Vali, Ajal and Ayam. Vali means air, Ajal means fire and Ayam means water. So, just like Ayurveda, Siddha emphasizes the importance of maintaining a balance between these three varieties. And the Siddha practitioners use a combination of herbs, minerals and metals. They also use therapies such as yoga and lifestyle modifications. Next about Unani system of medicine. It originated in ancient Greece but was further developed in Persia and India. It is based on the theory of four humors, blood, felgum, yellow bite and black bite. According to Unani, the body's health depends on the balance of these four humors. Unani treatments include herbal formulations, diet control and also the therapy such as hijama. Just like Ayurveda and Siddha, Unani emphasize restoring the balance in the body to maintain the health. So, they also focus on the natural substances and therapies which encourage the body to heal itself. So, this is about these three traditional medicine systems. So, the most common thing about these three medicinal systems is holistic approach. Unlike conventional Western medicine, which are often focused on treating symptoms, these systems aim to treat the body, mind and spirit. So, we can say that they focus on achieving overall balance and well-being in all aspects of life. The next one is use of natural remedies. These systems rely heavily on natural remedies like herbs, minerals and organic substances. 
and this ayurveda siddhan yunani also emphasize the importance of restoring balance in body's essential elements for example ayurveda consider doshas the siddha considers humors like the three elements in body and yunani also consider four elements so they focus on the overall physical and mental harmony the next important significance is preventive health care so this medical system emphasize the importance of preventive care and they also have minimal side effects since these system use natural substances they generally have fewer side effects compared to synthetic pharmaceuticals so in conclusion the integration of traditional medical systems like ayurveda siddha and yunani into international classification of diseases by who so this reflects a growing recognition of the ancient medical practices now let us solve this question consider the following developing a global standard for disease classification health care planning research providing insurance which of the above is a purpose of who international classification of disease all the four are the purposes of icd so the correct answer is option d with this let us wind up the discussion and move to the next news article now look at this article india's sovereign green bonds which were introduced in 2023 prioritize the sustainable transportation in order to cut the emissions so in this context let us discuss about the green bonds and india's sovereign green bonds see the green bonds are financial instruments used to raise funds for the projects that have environmental benefits the benefits may be such as the renewable energy clean transportation sustainable water management or climate resilience so these bonds ensure that the proceeds are exclusively used for eco friendly initiatives in india the first sovereign green bond was introduced in january 2023 and this is a part of government strategy to meet the climate commitments and also to fund the sustainable projects now what is the purpose of a green bond it is to mobilize resources for environmentally sustainable projects it will also support india's net zero emissions target by 2070 this will diversify the financing of green infrastructure it will also promote the private sector participation in green investments the green bonds can be used in the projects like renewable energy clean transportation sustainable water management energy efficiency climate change adaptations now what is the significance of green bonds over other funding sources the first importance is lower cost of capital the green bonds attracts global investors who are looking for sustainable investment so they are often come at lower interest rates the next important significance is long term financing green bond supports the projects with a long term gestation periods unlike the conventional debt financing it also aligns with the environmental social governance that is esg investment trends so the green bonds will increase the market credibility this green bonds also strengthens the government's global position in climate finance so it will ensure the government's commitment to climate goals now what are the challenges or shortcomings associated with green bonds the first important challenge is higher compliance cost the green bonds require strict monitoring and reporting on the fund utilization so the compliance cost for the green bond is very high the next one is limited market depth the green bond market is still evolving in india and it is limiting its liquidity so it has not evolved fully in india and it has a limited market depth in india the third one is green washing risk ensuring that projects genuinely contribute to the sustainability is a challenging task here the term green washing means using the funds which are meant to for uh, climate resilient goals for other uses so the green washing risk is very high in green bonds then currency and interest rate risk the foreign investors may face fluctuations which affect their returns now look at this question consider the following statements regarding the green bonds in india the government of india issued its first sovereign green bond in the financial year 2023 yes the statement is correct the green bonds can only be used to finance renewable energy projects this statement is wrong because green bonds can be used to finance the infrastructure projects for other climate resilience projects not just the renewable energy projects one of the key advantages of green bonds is their ability to attract investment at lower interest rate as this statement is correct so the statement 2 is incorrect the correct answer is option b 1 and 3 only so with this let us conclude the discussion and move to the next topic now look at this article the european union is seeking lower tariffs on cars wine and whisky uh, this is part of a negotiation for a free trade agreement with india so european union is seeking lower tariffs for these items with india the european union perceives indian market as a relatively closed market especially for high value exports in response to this india is pushing for greater access for skilled labor mobility and textile exports to european union the upcoming negotiations between india and european union aim to address these 
trade barriers. So, in this context, let us discuss about the relationship between India and European Union. European Union is a political and economic union of 27 member states and they are particularly located in Europe. It is established by Maastricht Treaty of 1993. The European Union aims to promote economic and political integration for stability and growth. It has a single market which ensures free movement of goods and services, also the capital and of people. The common currency is Euro which is used by 19 member states. So, this is about the basics of European Union. Now, let us see about the evolution of European Union. The European Economic Community that is EEC was established in 1957. It is created by the Treaty of Rome in order to establish a common market and promote the economic integration between some of the countries in Europe. In 1960, European Trade Association, European Free Trade Association was formed as an alternative trade bloc for the countries outside the European Economic Community. In 1987, the launch of Erasmus program. This program enabled the students to study in different countries of Europe. In 1993, the Maastricht Treaty was signed which transformed the European Community into European Union. So, this has expanded the scope of European Union to include political, social and security policies. Then in 1999, the Euro, the common currency was introduced. Initially, it is used for commercial and financial transaction in, nine, in 11 countries. Now, it was used in almost 19 countries. In 2007, the Treaty of Lisbon was signed. This treaty aimed to enhance the efficiency and transparency and also protecting the democracy while addressing the global challenges between the European nations. In 2013, Croatia joins the European Union and it became the 27th member state to join the European Union. In 2016, Brexit referendum, 52 percentage of UK voters opted to leave the European Union and in 2020, United Kingdom officially exit from European Union. So, we have seen about the evolution of European Union. Now, let us see about the structure of EU. The European Council compromised the head of the state or the head of the government and they set the European Union's overall policy direction. Then there is European Commission which is the executive body responsible for policy implementation and law enforcement. So, this European Commission is like a uh, police organization responsible for enforcing the law. Then there is European Parliament which is a legislative body directly elected by the European Union citizens. Then lastly, the Council of European Union. It represents the member states who are responsible for legislation and policy coordination. So, these four are the important structure of European Union. European Council, European Commission, European Parliament and Council of EU. Now, let us see some other important institutions in relation to European Union. The Court of Justice of European Union. This court ensures consistent interpretation and application of European laws. The European Central Bank, which maintains the price stability and manages the monetary policy for Eurozone nations. European Court of Auditors, which oversees the financial management and transparency in European Union operations. Now, let us see about the free trade agreement between European Union and India. See, European Union is India's largest trading partner with a bilateral trade reaching 88 billion euros in 2021. European Union is also a major foreign investor in India and the investment has been growing in the last years. The European Union also funds the transport and energy projects to support the India's modernization efforts. There is also high level engagement through regular summits and political dialogues. India support for the role in international organization like United Nations and World Trade Organization is also supported by European Union. Now, look at this prelims practice question. Which sector has been a point of contention in India-European Union trade relations? The correct answer is option A, automobile and pharmaceuticals. If you like the video, please share it with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to Shankar IAS Academy YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.